Hello there and welcome to the series The Basics of Embedded Audio Programming. I am Renato from Guitars AI and on this tutorial we are going to write our first program using this board. So it's kind of the hello world of uh, embedded audio systems. So we are going to audio loop back from the stereo line in to the line out. So we are going to configure the board to use the IDE to, to program the board. We are going to run uh, this application inside this board. So let's get started. The IDE in the integrated development environment we are going to use is the Code Composer Studio. So it's from Texas Instruments. So you can go to the Texas Instruments uh, homepage and download Code Composer Studio. Uh, I think you need to register for a free account to download. So I'm using the version 10. This board, it's very old and it comes with the version 4 which doesn't work with um, Windows 10 but uh, with a few modifications we can um, run all the examples uh, designed for Code Composer Studio 4 also with the Code Composer Studio 10. So you can go to the Texas Instruments website and download Code Composer Studio and install on your computer. So the Code Composer Studio, it needs a workspace. So this is a folder where the projects are stored. When you start Com Code Composer Studio, it will ask you to create this uh, directory or set a directory as a workspace. And then we will need to install the C5000 compiler. That it's, uh, it doesn't come with the uh, installation itself and we need to install it separately. So I'm here at the Texas Instruments uh, homepage. We can search for Code Composer Studio. Download. So we have here the uh, Code Composer Studio IDE. And we are in this um, page here. And we can download Code Composer Studio. Uh, here there's just an explanation that um, the Code Composer Studio V7 and later there are technology software publicly available compliant. So this means it does not require a paid license. So we can go down here. In my case I'm using a um, Windows machine. So you can download here and you also find for Mac and Linux. And you can download the Code Composer Studio install on your machine. So we can start a Code Composer Studio and when you open it the first time it should ask you to set up a, a director for the workspace but you can also select the workspace from here. So what we need to do now is go to view CCS App Center and then you need to find here the C5500 compiler. In my case it's already installed so you should click here to select like uh, you can select these other ones. Once you select you can go and install software. So after that probably you need to restart Code Composer Studio and maybe uh, restart your computer but you need to make sure that you have the C5500 compiler installed. Now we will create a new project. So you need to go to File, New, CCS Project. And then we need to, conf to configure the following project settings. We need to choose the target, the connection type, we give it a project name, uh, the compiler version, the linker command file we need to leave it empty. The runtime support library we need to choose this file. And then we also need to choose an empty project because we are going to copy files from the example uh, to this uh, the folder that will be created called hello world inside the workspace. And then we will click on finish. Then we will copy or unzip the files for the um, hello world example into this folder. 
So after you install the C55 compiler and then you relaunch the um, Code Composer Studio, we can go to File, New, CCS Project. So here we have the uh, new CCS project. We need to choose the target to be the C5515. And this is our board, the TMS 320C5515. Then we need to choose this text instruments XTS 100 Vitual USB Debugger Probe. We are going to give our project a name, Hello World, and it's going to uh, create this folder hello world inside the workspace the compiler version there's just this here and here we need to leave the linker command file to none and the runtime support library is this file here and the project is empty project so we can finish and it creates our empty project here now we have here this application one getting started zip file with all these C uh, files here and I'm going to extract this to my workspace so I'm going to the Texas workspace the folder hello world and I'm going to select folder and I will extract so now when we go back here we have our hello world project and we have now the files that we extract or copied to the hello world folder inside our workspace so the hello world is the active project for debug and we can view the main c.c file if we double click on the project explorer window so when we go back to the code composer studio this is the active project and we can find here the main.c we can double click on that this is the project explorer and then we have our main file so we're going through the main.c file with more detail but basically we have some includes here so there's a header file uh, with information of the board we have a header file for PLL for the audio codec here we're defining uh, variables to use as a left input right input uh, outputs and mono we define the sampling uh, rate here is the main function so we initialize the board initialize the pll initialize the codec the audio codec uh, and then we will simply run through look through the samples and then we'll convert left and input to mono signal and then we're assigning the left input to the left output, right input to the right output, and we're writing in the audio codec. And when we finish, we disable put codec into reset, and the program is terminated. So basically, this is what we're doing for our hello world. We're playing the left and the right inputs to the left and the right output, but we are converting to a mono input. We need now to configure the project properties, so we go to Project, Properties, and then we go to General Properties. It's a good time to connect the Easy DSP board to your PC, and then we need to make sure that we have this connection for the XDS100 V2, that we have no file for the linker command, that we have this file for the runtime support library, then we, we are going to verify the connection so all the JTAG tests should su succeed after uh, you click on finish and then we need to set the processor options so we will go to this build C55 compiler processor options and we must change to specified memory to huge so this is a very important step that we need to do here then we need to go to the advanced options to the runtime model options and we need to change the specified type size to hold results of pointer math to 32 so by default here is 16 we need to change that to 32 and then we are ready to build the project so we can 
go here to let's put this here project project properties so on the general property we need to choose here the Texas Instruments XDS so we already set the C55 and this is the target is a C5515 now we can verify so a lot of uh, JTAG integrity scan test succeeded so it's all fine there are no errors so we can finish that so now we need to go to processor options and we need to change this um, specify memory model we need to change it to huge then we need to go to advanced options and we go to the runtime model options and we need to change here specify type size to hold results of pointer math to 32 we need to make sure that we have no linker uh, file and we have uh, the uh, runtime support library everything is fine so we can apply and close then we can go to project and build project so here we have the console window and we see that the build finished and we don't have any errors so here there's this window for problems we don't have any errors so everything seems to be fine so we have properly configured our project and we have a build so this is what we did to build the project we went to project build project and then there is this console here finish building target hello world everything fine so there's no problems if you have some build problems you need to go again and see if you set this memory to huge and this um, type size to hold results of pointer math to 32 and you have selected the right runtime support library so next step is that we are going to debug the project so next step is that we are going to debug the project so we're going to go to run debug then the problem will be ready to run from the beginning of the main function and then we can click on the run resume and then the program should run and you should see the following uh, in the console window so we have here running audio loopback from stereo in to line out and you should hear if you have a microphone on the stereo in and your headphones on the line out a microphone or other any uh, if you have some music some uh, I, uh, iPod or anything connected to the stereo in you should now hear to in your headphones and this is exactly what we will do we will go here to run debug so we have here the we're inside the main, fu main function and we can click here resume and we see here on the console we have this uh, register config values the PLL running get getting started project audio loop back and now you can hear from uh, the stereo in to your headphones so this is in fact the hello world for uh, our first program for the board so we are simply playing the inputs to the outputs we are going into more details into each of these functions what um, they are doing we are talking about the a PLL so we see here there's also an uh, assembly instruction here without any uh, detail so we also need to uh, look at that and then we will start taking a look into other examples to terminate the program we can just click here to this uh, stop 
and then we are back to this editing mode and we're out of this debugging session so that's it for our first tutorial we uh, will go into detail uh, later on to study what all these functions are doing and see you later